Another way to represent data graphically is to do either a frequency or relative frequency polygon uh, or something called an ogive. What we're going to do is start with a data set and we're going to use a frequency table. So here are our intervals and the frequencies. Now for the uh, polygons, uh, this is different than the histograms. Uh, histogram, we would plot the beginning and end of, the, of each interval, of each class. But here what we're going to do is we're going to get the midpoint. So what I'm going to do is move the frequencies over like this. And what I'm going to do is find the midpoint of each of my classes or my intervals. Finding the midpoint is relatively straightforward. I'll give you an example here. You just take the two uh, ends of the interval and divide by two, which would end up being 12. And so that's my midpoint. And I'd continue to do that with the other ones, getting all the midpoints. Because it's these midpoints that I'm going to use to make my polygon. From here, it's just a matter of creating my axes, uh, putting uh, the scale on the bottom. That will be my data, right? I'll be plotting these midpoints. Noticing that if for my scale, I actually use the intervals, then of course the midpoints will be in, well, the middle. So right in here is going to be you know, my 12. And in this spot right here is 20. So I can now do the frequencies as now points. Right, so that's 2. And in the middle point here is going to be 3. And so on. Just like this. Uh, now what I can do is connect the dots like that. Now one thing, uh, this isn't really a polygon yet. This right here, which would have, of course, be 4, well, what's the frequency of that? That's 0. So it does come down to the x-axis at both ends. And now, <coughs> assuming that these are nice straight segments, this, of course, would be a polygon and does show you the distribution of the data uh, pretty nicely. So this is a frequency polygon. Now, I said frequency polygon or relative frequency polygon. Well, what we need then is, of course, the relative frequencies. So we can continue our table up here and talk about relative frequencies. <clears throat> well, to get the relative frequencies, uh, that's essentially a percentage. So uh, how many numbers are there? Well, if we add that up, it turns out to be 24 numbers. So this 12 happens twice out of 24. The 20 happens three times out of the 24. And so what we can do uh, is 2 out of 24, 3 out of 24, uh, and so on. Something like this. Plug that into your calculator. And of course, you can get, uh, they will all be decimals because, of course, uh, in every case, the numerator is smaller than the denominator because the denominator is the total and each is less than the total. So it'll look like this. And here are all the relative frequencies. And if you are to add up the frequencies, you know, because these are essentially percentages, of course, it should add up to 1 or 100%. So for a relative frequency polygon, instead of putting in the frequencies, you now if I was to label this, you know, that would be 2, 3, 3, 5, 7, and 4. What we end up doing is just using the relative frequencies. And we can do that pretty simply just by rescaling the y-axis. Just like this. So you know, here is 0.8%, you know, 12.5%, 20.8%, 29.2%, all as relative 
frequencies. Now, the last part to this, <coughs> as I said earlier, was called the ogive. Now, the ogive is, again, fairly straightforward once you know what it is, and that is a, a cumulative summation right, of the frequencies, known as the cum sum right, of the frequencies. So you start with two, and then from here, there's three plus the two below it, so that's five. Here, it's going to be the three plus the three plus the two, so that's going to be eight. And then, of course, we have the five plus all the previous ones, 13, seven plus all the th previous ones is 20, and then four plus all the previous ones is 24. So this is a cumulative summation. We essentially keep uh, adding the new number to all the previous numbers. Uh, and uh, what we end up doing is uh, graphing this. Now, it's going to look a little different. Here, I've erased uh, the relative frequency polygon. And at this 12, right, which is this midpoint, cumulative summation is 2. Right, so that's kind of like what it was before. Next one, it's 5. So it's going up. Next one is 13. So it's going to be kind of up here. And you'll notice that because it's a cumulative summation, every point necessarily is going to be higher than the previous point. The rest of it looks like this. And you connect it up. And it looks something like that. And it's always getting bigger. And it will get bigger at different rates. You can see here, this middle part, it's growing more quickly than it did in the beginning. And it seems to be leveling off towards the top. The ogive can be useful. Uh, it's almost like percentile. Uh, if uh, this data doesn't represent uh, temperature, but as an example, temperature is a very good one for ogives. Uh, because if you want to know how many days out of the year were at least, uh, you know, 15 degrees centigrade, then this would give you that number that's 15 degrees centigrade or less, it will add them all up for you. And so you can see those cumulative summations. So for certain applications, the ogive can be quite useful.